I'm going to specifically talk about for the next 20 minutes or so is with these new effective treatments, can we use drug treatment, systemic therapy, drug treatment before, after, or even instead of surgery? And if so, should it be immune treatments or should it be BRAF targeted treatments? So what I'm going to talk about is how do we sequence the treatment? Does it make a difference if we use drugs before surgery versus after? And I'm going to show you that I think it makes a big difference. But first, I have to talk a little bit about how we choose to use drug treatment. What choice we make when we have all these different treatments. So let's think of it this way. If we have a patient with stage four disease, metastatic melanoma, not a patient who would normally be a candidate for surgery, someone who has needs drug treatment because the tumors are too widespread for surgery. Well, we could give them one drug, multiple drugs, immune therapy, targeted therapy. We might have a lot of choices. Today, I think it's fair to say, if we knew a patient would have a good response to the single agent anti-PD-1 drugs like nivolumab or pembrolizumab, there would, that would be the best treatment for that patient because the least side effects, the least toxicity come from single agent treatment, not combination immune therapy. And so the more concerned we are about toxicity, the more likely we are to choose just one drug. Now, this is true for immune therapy. I want to be clear, for BRAF-targeted therapy, we actually can get less side effects when we combine drugs and better results. So it's a little different. But all of our data so far is showing that if you've got a choice between targeted therapy and immune therapy for stage four melanoma, unresectable tumors, use immune therapy first and use the targeted therapy as a backup, okay? So that's the pre premise for stage four disease. Now, obviously there are good reasons to use combinations and take that higher toxicity. And in widespread disease, the main reasons we use the combination of IPI and NEVO are for brain metastases when they need drug treatment, for eye melanoma because it's so much less um, sensitive to immune therapy than for skin melanomas, and maybe for the really um, aggressive melanomas that are really causing a lot of problems. But how do we define that? How do we know when that is? And when do we use immune therapy and targeted therapy? Those are difficult. I'm not going to go into details. I'm just trying to give a broad outline. What's in the middle? So we got the really straightforward cases, the really complicated cases. What about the average person? Well, right now today, for any previously untreated stage four melanoma patient who isn't too frail for the combination of immune drugs and whose melanoma isn't so extensive that ipinevo is needed, it looks like the newest combination, the nevorella combination, looks like the winning choice to start with. As I said, even if there's a BRAF mutation, not 100%, agreed upon across the whole world, but, but that's largely the consensus. It's more effective than NEVO alone. It's not as many side effects as IPI-NEVO. For most people, this is going to be the right choice. On the other hand, previously untreated stage four melanoma is becoming an endangered species. What do I mean by that? I wish it was endangered because no one was getting metastatic melanoma. But what's happening is we're using treatments earlier and earlier. We're using treatments before stage four, in stage three, and sometimes even stage two. We're using treatments currently 
after surgery in what we call the adjuvant setting or adjuvant therapy. 